Well, Deb Murphy filed this story for Sierra Wave Media. The Inyo County Board of Supervisors acknowledged the complexity of water issues in Inyo County at Tuesday's meeting. What the board didn't do was accept recommendations presented by Water Commissioner Chair Mike Prather and Commissioner Craig Patton. Now, while the details of mitigation projects, groundwater basins, and pumping impacts may be complicated, to Prather, the commission's recommendations were a matter of drawing a line in the sand. This list has been an open wound for some time. There is widening concern by citizens. The Inyo supervisors, though, aware of public sentiment, wanted more detail, more caution. Now at its January 27th meeting, the Water Commission chose the McNally Ponds and Pasture Enhancement Mitigation Project as its top priority. Prather explained the short list called from a long list of projects included five bridges and laws, but some progress has been made in the laws well fields. Now, mitigation for groundwater pumping at McNally was to provide water in the winter for waterfowl habitat and irrigation for forage in the pasture. Now, according to Prather, the berms and plumbing have been for 24 to 25 years. For 16 of those years, the project had no water, he said. Four years, it had reduced water, some of the reduced flows with the agreement from the county. Prather also said, we need to force the issue if necessary. Now, according to Prather, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power has cited reduced water from Mono Basin as the reason behind the waterless McNally project. Speaking for himself, Prather said, we need to make this work or get it off the list. Move the water somewhere else. And your supervisor Mark Tillemans pressed for caution. What we're battling is the central command, Tillemans said, the city of Los Angeles. And your supervisor Dan Tothero wondered if by prioritizing, we will lose somewhere else. And Chair Jeff Griffiths wants to see more solutions. It doesn't have to be a detailed plan, Griffiths said. Now, next up, Patton with the commission's recommendation that the board not permit any new LADWP wells until existing obligations have been met. There is much more on this story by Deb Murphy on our website, sierrawave.net. Deb also filed a story on last week's Water Commission field trip. 300 acres scarred by lost meadow grasses in the Five Bridges area north of Bishop, south of the Owens River, could be the poster child for failed mitigation of groundwater pumping. The mantra, if there is damage, it will be mitigated, has not worked at Five Bridges. Now the water table dropped off after a year and a half of pumping. 28 years later, the damage has not been reversed. Now, 36 local water watchers got a first-hand look last Wednesday during a Water Commission field trip. Interest in the mitigation efforts spiked after the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power opted to retool and reactivate two wells used to dewater the gravel pits to the north and send water through the aqueduct system in the late 1980s. Now, those wells, as we've talked about, W385 and W386, ran for approximately 18 months before the damage was identified by an, by an Inyo County water department staff, uh, staffer during a flyover. The wells were then permanently shut down, a status disputed by LADWP. The department has retrofitted the wells to limit pumping to depths between 350 and 500 feet and will be doing a California Environmental Quality Act analysis on impacts. Now, Inyo County Water D Department hydrologist Keith Rainville explained the geology of the area at the first stop of the field trip, pointing out the natural floodplain and series of terraces dotted with sage within the 300-acre site. The group moved on to get a look at the damaged area, as well as monitoring wells used to gauge water table levels. And again, there's much more on this story on Five Bridges on our website, sierrawave.net. Well, the town of Mammoth Lakes, a press release notes, has begun to process the process to plan, design, and construct complementary community commu multi-use facilities at Mammoth Creek Park. Now, the project includes three major components, a multi-use facility, complementary community center, and a playground with accessible components. The anticipated opening date of the multi-use facility is October 2017. Now, the Recreation Commission in Mammoth Lakes wants to hear how 
the community wants to play on the ice and at the rec zone. There will be workshops on Monday, February 22nd, 6 p.m., Tuesday, February 23rd at 9 a.m. It will be the same workshop. Now, both workshops will be held in Suite Z at the Minaret Village Mall. Light snacks and refreshments will be served. The press release notes, what is your winter passion? What is your summer passion? Town says, tell us how you want to play at the Mammoth Rec Zone and also states with your help, we can create a recreation destination that the entire community of Mammoth Lakes will actively enjoy, value, and ultimately be proud to call your park. Now, for more information about Plan Mammoth Creek Park or the workshops on Monday and Tuesday, you can contact Recreation Manager and Public Information Officer Stuart Brown at 760-934-8989, extension 210, or the website planmcp.com. Well, the Indian National Forest is seeking input to the proposed hazardous fuels reduction project near the community of Swall Meadows within the Round Valley fire perimeter. Now the project is 108 acres, including a construction of new shaded fuel breaks and maintenance of an existing shaded fuel break. Fuels reduction treatments could would be conducted on either side of Swall Meadows and Sky Meadows roads. An additional unit would extend south and east from Swall Meadows Road along the private lands boundary. Now, the purpose of this project, the press release notes, is to remove standing dead fuels, improving defensible st space and safe ingress egress for the community and emergency responders in the event of a future wildfire event. Now, subsequent reforestation with native tree species may occur in areas that had high rates of mortality from the wildfire to accelerate restoration of the burned area. If you would like more details or provide input, you can contract and Andrew Weinhardt of the Inyo National Forest, phone number 760-924-5550. Well, the Eastern Sierra was rocking and rolling Tuesday afternoon. Series of earthquakes rumbled through the Owens Valley. Now, the biggest quake was measured at 4.8, and that hit at 3.04 p.m. Tuesday, centered seven miles northwest of Big Pine. Now, aftershocks continued with a 2.9 and a 2.8, and then another big jolt came at 3.27 p.m. That was a 4.3 magnitude, again, all centered seven miles northwest of Big Pine. Both the Inyo County Sheriff's Department and the Bishop Police Department received no reports of damage or injuries. We'll be back with more news.